I'm so happy and excited to tell you about our official sponsors of the full season of She Loves Herself, the podcast, The Grief Season. Oh my goodness, this partnership could not be more aligned um, if I tried. What I love about this brand and the people behind it is not only that the product is absolutely incredible, but the two people behind it are very, very special people. Their core values and what their mission is in this lifetime on earth is to serve and support people with their natural health and their natural healing. Um, let me tell you about Becky and Nathan Bowles. They are an incredible couple. They have four children and Becky has a background in science. And for the past nine years, they have been official distributors for doTERRA essential oils here in the UK. So I am a huge fan of essential oils and I have been for many, many years, but I've never found one brand that has ticked every box for me. So many essential oils smell amazing, but the smell goes away. I don't really always feel the full benefits of what I believe I should. Um, there's quite a bit added, some things taken away, some things diluted. And that's what makes doTERRA essential oils completely different from any other ones that I've used before. 100% essential oils. They're pure, powerful and potent essential oils with nothing added and nothing taken away. I cannot recommend this brand enough because not only does it support natural healing, um, it's products that I can use on my children my pet, dog, um, it supports our emotional health, our physical health, um, my spiritual health. And there are so many benefits to a really good quality of essential oil. And I'm so glad that Becky and Nathan and I have connected and we feel that this is just a great product to really support you all on your journey. So the exciting news with this is because you are a She Loves Herself podcast listener, you get 25% discount. So I am going to drop the link in the show notes. Um, all you need to do is click on the link and it will take you to a page just for our podcast listeners and you will get 25% off your essential oils. This is quality, quality products I love them. I notice a difference as soon as I use them. So I cannot, I cannot recommend them enough. Um, or you can visit the website www.botanistkitchen.co.uk but make sure that you go over to the podcast page to get your 25% discount. Please let me know how you get on because I know that you are going to love them just as much as me. Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new season of She Loves Herself, the podcast. We are on season seven and this is a brand new season with a brand new look and feel. So of course it is still the She Loves Herself podcast, it is still about self-love and empowerment but this season we are focusing on grief and loss and my intention with this is to support anyone that is navigating grief or loss in their life right now. We are on the lead up to Christmas. We are working our way through Christmas. And whilst Christmas can feel so joyous and special for so many people, it is also a time where so many people reflect on loss and death and um, grieving. And I created this because I too am going through loss right now. Um, we lost my amazing mum three months ago. And this is a real process that I have been working through for, you know, many, many years. But actually, since she passed away, I have been working through the loss of having her not here anymore and what that looks and feels like. So I want to support as many people in this space. So um, in this season, we are joined by so many incredible guests who are here to share their stories share their wisdom and their insights and support for you, the listener. I will also be continuing to do the Monday episodes. These are solo episodes, but every Friday I am joined by a brilliant guest. So please enjoy this season. It maybe doesn't resonate with you right now, 
but it's maybe something that you may revisit in the future. And if you do feel like it will benefit someone, please don't forget to share this because it may just be the thing that someone really needs to hear right now. Thank you so much and enjoy season seven. Welcome to She Loves Herself, the podcast, the grief season, Donna Ashworth. Hello. How are you? Hello. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you for having me. Oh, it is an absolute honour to have you on this oh. podcast. And just for the listeners, um, I only really connected, and this is what happens, right? When we are navigating a process, and obviously I've been navigating grief for nearly three months now, and actually way before that, to be honest, but um, my mum passed away almost three months ago. And it was when I was on my way to Bali to really throw myself into grief on the deepest level with no distractions that I came across your work. Um, actually, that's not strictly true. I came across really starting to follow your work, but I had heard of your name because you and I were going to speak at an event together a few months before. Um, and I cancelled that event because I actually was going off, my mum had passed away, I was going off to Bali and I knew that you didn't make that event either, but we've come back together again well, and I reached out to you and you're, yeah, everything that you're putting out there right now is speaking to not only my soul, but I know so many people right now. Um, so Donna, for the listeners who haven't heard of you and who don't know who you are, could you just share a little bit about who you are, please? Um, so I am 47. I'm a mum of two. I lived back in Scotland uh, after many years living away. And I started writing on uh, Facebook about five years ago, sort of little quotes and articles and things. And it, it slowly sort of um, transformed into me writing um, <clears throat> poetry. Not quite sure where it came from. I, I used to write poetry as a, as a teenager, um, but not deliberately, if that makes sense. It was just something that I remember doing. And um, during the pandemic, I saw it as a sort of thing to keep me busy and keep me purposed. If I, I posted sort of every day, tried to capture the feelings that we were all going through. And it's just snowballed. And I mm. now have se seven <laughs> poetry books. Um, and it just yeah it's it's a dream come true if I'm perfectly honest I yeah. still wish myself that I get to do it for a career and a living every single day it's it's a lovely it's a lovely job to do mm, isn't it and gosh and I honestly want to also say you are a bestseller yeah <laughs> so you have written books however you're a Sunday Times bestseller as oh. well. So yeah. let's just celebrate that <laughs> and honour that because that is no mean feast, right? That is not yeah. an easy thing to do. I um, didn't even think it was a thing. I mean, I knew it was a thing, but I, thought, <laughs> I didn't think it was a thing for me. I did. It wasn't on my radar. And um, I knew the book had done well. You know, my first published book, which was I Wish I Knew It. I knew it was selling. Um, but when my publisher said, oh, you're on the Sunday, you're on your number three on the Sunday list, I was like, oh, great, what's that? And she's like, you know, the Sunday Times. And I, and I just, it took me about an hour to actually go. <laughs> and then I just thought, well, so it's, it's in a little frame on, can you see it? You can see it. Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> it was no only wonder. in July. Um, it was only in July. But yeah, it was, it was just a really, the sound of it. And then they reprinted all my um, books with uh, Sunday Times, you know, yes, Beth Feller yeah. on it, which was just ridiculously wonderful and pinched me. Mm. Um, but it, it happened as quickly as it sort of moved on, if that makes sense, you know. Yeah, and it, it does make sense. And I think, though, what I really get from just your energy and what I read, the, <clears throat> the messages that you put out, in your beautiful poetry is a real sense of gentleness and authenticity and calm and compassion and all of these words that and that are emotional words that people feel when yeah. they read your work and 
it honestly feels like even just sitting with you just now you're just in flow oh. like that sense of flow and I think when we aren't pushing something so hard and it comes from for me your soul's mission that you are here to do that and to spread those you know those words and to help heal people and help people through their healing and their grieving process with your words that's what you're here to do and it's really clear like I do a lot of intuitive work Donna and I, as soon as you came on I'm like wow oh. I feel that deeply and so thank you for what you're doing that's very very nice that's made me feel very emotional <laughs> it's funny because I mean I'm, I'm with you 100% everything that I do is intuitive and it always has been since my late teens when I had to sort of go down a pathway of life's going to be a struggle for me. I'm going to have to equip myself better than the average 17, 18 year old. I'm not going to get away with it. So I had to go down a sort of self-help route and I got into Reiki and I got into, um, you know, uh, You Can Heal Your Life and all the books that, that I could get Louise my hands on. Hay. Louise mm -hmm. Hay. And um, so from then on, it, I, I was, my mum's the same way and I was, we were talking about it the other day and I was saying that I programmed my brain so well then that I don't even realise I do it now. Yeah. The affirmations, they're so deeply tuned, those affirmations that, you know, I probably should have updated them, but because I, I programmed them in at that time in my life, they're still there and they just, instead of, switching into negativity or switching into anxiety my brain switches now into affirmation and you know bringing it all bringing the nervous system down mm -hmm. and it's automatic now I don't even have to think about it but I'm not a calm person I'm not a gentle person all of those lovely things that you say are not who I am but I have to work to bring that in so I think that because I am doing that I'm able to share it out and, and share how I bring that into a really muddled and anxious brain, which yeah. is how I naturally run. So it's a constant, it's constant work for me too, but a lot of it is now set. Wired. It's those yeah. new neural pathways that you've created, right? Definitely. And, and that's it. Totally and I think, sorry. No, I was just going to say, you can totally do that. You can program your brain any way you think that you need it. It can be done and it's just really oh yeah definitely the listeners here know this right because this is why they tune on at this podcast and it is around really honoring our truth and and working on that and working with our nervous system because a lot of the time it's on high alert right and actually we can be anything we want to be when we're born we're not born with all of those fears and anxieties actually it's what we learn, it's what we pick up, it's what we witness. And actually we can take those, those new sort of programs and start to wire them in, but it takes consistency. Like you said, it takes work, you know, and we are all faced with challenges in our lives, you know, and I want to talk about that with you on this season, because there is so much I want to talk to you about. I'm going to have to get you back on another season. I'll give you a part one and a part two. I know, because <laughs> I want to predominantly focus this one on grief, grief and navigating our way through grief. I know my wee brain's going, oh yeah, but you want to talk to her about this and talk yeah, to her about that. Yeah. I'll, bring it, I'll bring it back because um, I want to ask you, right, when you created your, your three books, Life, loss and love what was happening with you at that time you know when because grief is something that is not linear it's very unique to individuals but it's something that 100% of us will face in our lifetime yeah and um, what was happening for you that got you into that space of those words flowing the way they did I mean, the, the the life, love and loss is something that um, I've wanted to do for a long time. Well, I say a long time. I've only been making books for two years. But <clears throat> even prior to that, I feel like um, when you don't have the words, wouldn't it be wonderful if somebody put them all in one place so that when you're overwhelmed or, you know, your brain is firing off on all tangents, if I handed you a giant book and said, when you finish that book, you'll have the answer. You wouldn't be able to do it. 
So it's bite size, you know, um, consumable chunks that you will be able to open up one page and get something from that page at a time when you're not capable of doing, you know, much more than that because mm -hmm. you're, you're you're so overwhelmed. So, and I wanted to update the the availability of um, poetry for ceremonies as well because um, I've always had a love of grief poetry. Well very strange sentence <laughs> but I think it's a beautiful thing to to keep reframing loss and and reminding everybody because like you say it's the one thing that will connect us there are two things that connect everyone and that's love and loss and actually I boil it down to one because it's the same it's the same thing um so to keep reframing the the loss and reminding of the love and to constantly keep you know um keep that moving and and evolving so that people are not um the waves should hit and you should feel consumed some days and, and other days you will feel lighter but it's it's about not being stuck in one phase you know try mm -hmm. to to work through the phases um which i believe there is a natural order as all things in life there's a circle there's a natural mm -hmm. order and uh, I believe that grief has a natural order as well. And as long as you're um, honouring that, and that means grieving, it doesn't mean moving on or getting better. No, there are no. Not, there are not, there's no such a thing. It's about honouring the grief, you know, but also letting it evolve and yeah. allowing the grief to move through its, its own cycle because that's healthy. Uh, so I've always mm. wanted, to, I wanted to have things that celebrants could use and people who are just oh my goodness I'm going through something I need something or my friend is going through something and I'd love to gift her something I don't have the words so I, I, life love and loss was meant to make that a bit easier so that you would know if you've got a friend who's you know divorcing or has had a terrible relationship breakup love is the book you know if mm -hmm. you've got a friend that you just want to say I love you love is the book if you're sort of in a new stage of life or your midlife is specifically life is a book um and if you're going through you know the grieving process or someone that you know is then loss is a book mm -hmm. so that was where I was thinking I don't do books that specifically match what I'm going through um because the words just flow from everything, from everybody around me, the people who are writing to me, the things that are going on in the world. So I just bank all of that poetry and then I'll put them into books, if that makes Beautiful. sense. Oh, it makes perfect sense. And yeah. I guess, you know, even I'm going to read one out because, oh God, I'll try and not cry when I read this. <laughs> I love when someone reads them out. It's such a treat. Oh my goodness. Right. I'm going to bring it up on my phone here. <clears throat> I took a picture of it. Oh, where is it? Oh, and this is typical, isn't it? Typical. Where is it? Right. While I'm looking for this. My goodness, I had it right here. I had it right <laughs> here. This is just typical, isn't it's it? No, it's the same. You can never. It's always it. the same. It's, this, is my, this is my subconscious mind saying, don't do it. You're going to cry. Don't do it. Don't do it. But, but it's the one about losing your mum. Right, because obviously this is something that I'm going through right now. And I know that there are other people that go through loss and lose a parent and lose um lose their mum particularly. And um yeah, it's it's definitely a when I read it, I'm like, I, I actually read it and my sister read it about a week ago or two weeks ago and sent it to me. And I shared with her, I said, she's actually coming on my podcast. Oh, she's like, I can't stop reading her words right now. It's like she's speaking to us. Um, because those words just, I feel them deeply. And I honestly, Donna, I know that you said that you're not, this isn't when um, you're not sort of doing it um, from your own experience as such, but there's something being channeled through you. There's like I mean, this. I wrote I wrote the poem that you're talking about, and all of the loss of a mother poems when my um, best friend's mum passed away, uh -huh. and um, 
uh, we've been best friends since we were seven. So, you know, we grew up together. Her mum, you know, she lived across the street and we, we grew up as extended family. And uh, and uh, and I flew up when her mum was in hospice and actually was there um, at the time when it happened. So I went through that uh, watching Lynn, knowing Lynn and knowing everything about, you know, Lynn's mum and, and the family. And so that's where that poetry came mm -hmm. from it actually happened in Edinburgh airport when I was you know leaving the first one um and so really I totally channeled that through what Lynn you know was experiencing and I felt like I could I've always sort of sat next to people and and as they're talking I felt like I could almost yeah, take what so, they were yeah, feeling yeah and, it's so uh, interesting you say that because uh, so many people friends of mine were really close to my mum so mm. my mum was everyone sort of knew my mum's story she had yeah. 19 years with cancer but won her sort of battle I don't like that word but she did so many times and then it was at the end you know the last two years were probably the toughest two years but actually there was 19 years of before of, that before that of everything and when I went to Bali I honestly, it, it, I grieved, I grieved and I can grieve at home, but there's always a distraction. So I would be in that process of crying and then I'd have to go and get the kids from school or yeah. I had something to do. Um, and when I went to Bali, everything, it was on my own. And obviously I was like two hours from Australia. So it was different time difference. And I had no one or nothing. I couldn't make a friend there. Everyone said to me, you'll go to Bali and you'll meet loads of friends and you'll travel with them. I was like, no, I can't meet anyone. I met someone like, oh yeah, I'm leaving tonight. I'm leaving tomorrow. And it was perfect because it was absolutely the way it was planned for me. There was a bigger plan for me not to meet anyone and to really be in that process of on my knees and really facing grief and just- That's a brave thing to do. How long were you there? I went for three weeks and it was just three weeks after my mum passed away. Yeah. And I'll be honest, it, it wasn't even a plan to do it it was just this calling I felt intuitively that I needed to be there I didn't know why I didn't know anyone there I didn't know much about it and um, I knew it was so far away and you know my, my sister was saying you know are you sure about this it's you can't so just close. come back quickly <laughs> come back and why don't you try Spain and do you know what when I went there it was a disaster it was one yeah. disaster after another after another but it was perfect Donna because it took me to the point of really um full surrender full yeah. surrender and I laughed on the last day as I looked out and I was watching sunrise watching the waves coming in and it was like those waves represented my life and my resistance that I had to fully surrender and then as it you know as I watched those waves I watched every wave no matter the size of the wave every one of them met the shore and dissipated the shore didn't resist any wave no matter how big or small it was and it was almost like a representation of my feelings and my emotions some that I wanted to chase and some that I wanted to resist but they all were alchemized in the end and honestly it was the most challenging emotional experience of my life but it was the most incredible growth that I've ever had um, and I now cry when I when I cry. I mean, I feel this emotion from my mum and I miss her every day. And there's not a day that I haven't felt emotional, but I feel it and I feel that she's around me all the time. The human form of me, the 42 years that I've been on this planet, I want her back as a human. Like I know she's in spirit, but I want her as a human sometimes. I'm like, mom, we do this Christmas thing together. Like we do the Christmas list for dinner and we have this tradition. And this is the poem that I read this morning and I'm going to read it out to the listeners. It says, Christmas without your mum means you are now she. You are the one who creates Christmas. You are the one who honours traditions and ensures that the joy is passed down as she would have liked. But that is hard when you are hurting, when you are still a little girl deep down who misses her mama. Oh, very much indeed. So be kind, so be kind to that little girl, but go forth and do what your mother raised you to do, love, because one thing is for sure, she taught you well. Donna, that is so beautiful. 
<laughs> and it's so honestly I completely give you a cuddle. <laughs> Do you know though? I'm emotional, but it's beautiful. It's so beautiful, and I've never felt with grief. It's so painful and beautiful simultaneously. Yeah, because I feel so deeply emotions that I have never felt in my life. And I'm so grateful for that, but I'm also so like, whoa, it comes and it's like, but when we love hard, yeah, the pain is hard, right? I know. And you said something earlier, Donna, where you're like moving on. And we're doing the inverted commas things, guys. Yeah. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll know what we're doing. Yeah, moving um, on. We never move on. <clears throat> but you can move with. We move with. And I love that because we don't move on because move on moving on is almost like you're like, well you should forget them and I was thinking like if I died I wouldn't want people to forget me <laughs> you know I wouldn't want people to forget me yeah you want people to I mean we you know a lot of the the, the poetry I wrote in loss was imagining how I would feel if if we are able to see you know when we go if we are able to see the people that we left behind what would you want for them and you know I wanted to be careful because there's so many people say well they wouldn't want to see you sad they wouldn't want to see you sad and of course they wouldn't want to see you sad but you cannot help feeling mm -hmm. that there, there's no choice there you know there there, there is a point I, th I believe in the grief process where you can start to um turn some things into positivity and turn some things into joy but you must go through that you know deep deep phase of it you know you have lost them physically it is a loss you know it is devastating and it is the hardest thing that you'll go through and and every single one of us has to face that um but I also wanted to look at it from every single angle you know yeah. if we do go somewhere and we do look down and we do see you, you you're, you're going to want to make sure that you call them close you say their name you do the things that they like and and it's also about the generations below you yeah. you've just been promoted you know in life yeah. circle you are now she and I feel that um when my best friend lost her mum that was the biggest shock I think you know and it's not something you really think about until it happens is you suddenly go wait this is a job I never wanted I didn't want to be at the top of the generational tree you know but th the fact is that you are and you've been taught by the best yeah. and there is a sense of purpose that comes from that you know I think for women especially there is a sense of right my mum did this for me she taught instilled this in me she did that for us all she you know we all knew she was you know the top of the tree and, and 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 I can do that the way that she taught me by watching you know mm -hmm. and and so for me it's just about looking for all the all the things that you can pull out of it that will help yeah, I love that. And, and just by reframing you know the uh, the loss oh. and replacing the loss with other things Mm, I love um, that and I love how you said how she would want me like how do I, and you know this is obviously I'm, we're, we were talking about my mum there but again there's you know there, there's there's people who lose their dads and uh, grandparents pets all all of the things yeah, we all know, lose somebody we've so, all lost yeah. so devastating for so so many people and it is thinking about okay um how would they want me to be? You know, how would they want me to be living? And 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 of course, you're going to feel emotional. And it's so important that we allow ourselves to feel those emotions. But there is a process. I think you're absolutely right. How do we get to the point where we're not staying in it all the time, but we are honoring those moments? And I have had a lot of people message me, um, Donna, when I was creating this season saying like I, I didn't deal with it three years ago and now it's hit me because we can't avoid it we can try and we can maybe avoid it for six months a year two years three years sometimes longer by distracting ourselves by you know not really allowing ourselves to feel but sooner or later it manifests and sometimes it manifests in physical illness mental illness or it can just hit us like a ton of bricks and it's like, oh my gosh, right, I'm really grieving this now because we, I don't believe we can avoid grief. No, of course not. You can't avoid any, 
human emotion you know uh, you you can run away from it but mm. at some point you have to sit down and let it catch up and you know when it does catch up it feels like you you know it's going to drown you but you come out the other side of it and you're free of something you know that was that was pulling you back you've got to keep moving in life you've got to keep moving through yeah. um and um and evolving through all the all, all the things that whatever you face some people exactly. go through such tragedy you know in terms of grief but they also go through tragic you know divorces and tragic separation you know, yeah separations and so many things that can happen in this life that can totally break you and of course you have to keep moving every day and it takes so much physical power to get up and keep going mm. get in the survival mode you know mm-hmm. you've got to get out of that that's only supposed to be for a short period of time at some yeah. point you have to come back out of survival mode you've survived you've survived so, and you're here to live how can I, I live now? how can I, I live? live yeah yeah, yeah. And, you know, and everybody, everybody's different and there's so many ways to do it and I just think that you know I'm on a sort of one woman mission to write them all down <laughs> write and, them all down it is in, a way that, in a way that it's easy to um read without you know it's just a little it's a little poem it can't mm, I love that. you pack it up and you open yeah. it and usually our our intuition takes us to the page that we need to read I really believe in that every For, time. Oh, you're you're yeah. you're you're on my page, when I, sister. <laughs> when I go on a, a live, um, I never decide what I'm going to read. I, I, even though it's just names on a phone, I can absolutely yeah. feel which you know books I'm picking up and which poem I'm going to read, and it's for somebody on that live needed to hear it. Um, and it might sound ridiculous to it's some. Not- <laughs> not not to the listeners here. This is what we talk about on this yeah. podcast. But it's not intuition. Mm. Yeah, it's been my whole life has been lived like that anyway. Mm. So um, but yeah, they're just the right words in the right order. And you know, you can do you can write in books and books and books and self-help books, but sometimes a poem or a quote can shake your very foundations because it's it's such a jolt, you know, and 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 you'll never be the same after it because mm. it put itself in, you know, just just when you were needing it, just when there was a space for it. It can be a really powerful thing. So powerful. And I think the second part is when we read it and we see it, but it's then allowing ourselves to take the action on the back of it without yeah. guilt. Because I think that there's some people that feel so much guilt or, you know, regret sometimes you know I wish I had said or I feel guilty about so they you know sometimes people can punish themselves yeah um and think well you know I I don't deserve to be happy anymore because I said this thing or I didn't say that thing or I didn't show up the way I wanted to show up um and it's the same you know in, in, in death and also in you know breakups and relationships when something is ended and maybe one person has so much regret over that yeah. Um, but they have no control over it because we don't have control over the you know the person that's gone we can't bring them back and also with separation we can't control what another person thinks of us or if they yeah. want to be with us or they don't want to be with us and it's like how do we accept that and give ourselves permission to forgive ourselves you know forgive ourselves and actually allow ourselves to live again and be happy because we are here to live we're here to experience a whole spectrum of emotions and without sadness there would be no happiness without yeah. light there would be no dark and you yeah. know it's this comparisons isn't it and we're here to experience all of these emotions so often Donna we chase the joy yeah <laughs> we'll chase the joy avoid all the other stuff and I've been talking a lot about this recently around you know when we feel fear and when we feel like shame and all of these darker what are deemed as darker more painful emotions underneath all of them is love yeah you know underneath all of these emotions want it wants to feel loved you know when we feel shame we want to be able to just express what that is and still love feel loved underneath it all and we have to give ourselves permission to live again even if we are living with regret or pain or or something like that I mean I always think that when when it comes to people who've passed on 
souls talk you know it's not always about what you did or didn't say or where you weren't at the right time or you know you're not in control of all of that all of the time but souls talk and you know people know and I, I have a really strong belief that in the moment that people pass it's all rinsed away mm -hmm. and all that is left is the peaceful love the connections mm -hmm. and you know if their soul is somewhere blissful and peaceful or whatever it is that you believe they're not thinking about what you did or didn't do that you know these things are no longer a thing all that's mm. left is the thread that connects you know the love so mm. uh, there's peace to be found in that I think imagining you know that everything all of that drops away at that point where they pass over and all that's left is the love and when it comes to um relationships with other people you there's only one thing you can control when it comes to love in your life and that's you know you decide how much love you have in your life because if you are not loved by the right people if you didn't have loving parents or you don't have a great you know family you can fill that yourself you can do that you can decide to create that love for yourself and it codes a pathway for new love people will watch the way that you love yourself and you are teaching them how to love you and you're teaching the people that you bring into your life children you know how to love themselves how to code pathways for other people to love them so there's only one thing you can control and that's how much you love yourself mm -hmm. um, and you have to let all the other you know you have to let the people go who are not loving you the way that you feel you should be um and you fill that void yourself and and it's perpetuates you know it creates mm -hmm. more the one thing that you cannot have enough of or too much of is love um mm -hmm. but if you don't have enough you can you can do something about that yourself and it, it, mm -hmm. it really is a cycle of of growth once you start doing that I think so I'm always banging on about you know you can love other people and not love yourself. You can have successful relationships and not love yourself, but they, they're limping along bravely. They're not flourishing those relationships because until you found that acceptance for yourself and the ability to release yourself of guilt and fear and you know all the things that are dragging you down, until you've got that, your relationships will limp along bravely. They won't thrive in the way that they could if you were to oh gosh yeah ah oh, all of what you just said it's right it, 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 yeah it's so everything. I'm always I'm always banging on I mean love the book love is not about romantic love it's about friendships it's about painting it's about familial love it's about breakups it's about you know uh, how your your heart will be broken throughout your life but what you can do yourself to constantly heal that, you know, to constantly uh, mm -hmm. learn from it and move on. It's not about get a better relationship in five steps or, you know, this is how it be. I'm not a very romantic person in terms of what, you know, my husband and I, I don't go about saying, oh, you know, please buy me flowers or anything like that. I'm a real believer in, you know, if you've texted me because you knew I had a really, you know, weird dream and I was having a bit of a day and you just you know said can can I pick something up for you on the way those those things to me are you know yeah. so how was I going to write a love poetry book <laughs> yeah. and then I thought well I want to point out all the types of love that there are to everyone there are a million times you know Valentine's Day comes around and people go oh you know I'm unloved and I'm alone no you're alone on valentine's day if if you choose to be but you're not unloved you are loved in myriad ways you know count them and you'll be astonished romantic love is one tiny aspect of that it's important um but you 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 won't fix anything by sort of filling that romantic category you have to have fixed it first so yeah self-love it, it you know it, it's cheesy as it sounds self-love is bandied about so much these days but I, I sometimes change it to self-like or even just you know self be decent acceptance huh? <laughs> uh, the acceptance is the big thing self-awareness yeah I actually just posted about this today self-awareness followed by self-acceptance mm -hmm. followed by self-love equals freedom yeah because it's so flipping true right because if we cannot have we can do all the work and read all the books but if we have no self-awareness yeah 
then we're just what we're just kind of walking about in the dark really we need to have that self-awareness where am I because everything is a mirror we do show people how to love us yeah and we also show people how to show up in our relationships and this is the whole thing and you know I've spoken to some people with grief recently and they're like I really struggle um to show my partner that I'm struggling with grief I don't want them to see me that way and it's that you know fear of being embarrassed of being seen of being a burden but actually when we're internalizing all of that and we're not fully expressing our whole spectrum of emotions then we wonder sometimes why our relationships aren't working yeah because they're only seeing a tiny part of us we're not willing to open up and be vulnerable and share our truth in our relationship and and it has a you know, you talk about self-love there and, you know, we say it gets bandied around a lot. You know, self, self-love is is not always easy. It's yeah, not, I know, think it's the hardest thing. It is because, we're, you know, when we really self-love, that's us looking at those shadow parts of ourselves and being willing to go in and do the work, willing yeah. to go in and, and do the work that, it you know, that healing work, that deeper work um, that sometimes can feel really ugly. Um and, and and that's it included with grief you know sometimes again and we are in a society where um it's it's talked about a bit more now but it, it really isn't like I was actually trying to look up a death doula right because I thought you know <laughs> why not a death doula right yeah. so I was um looking up a death doula but this would be really great to get a death doula to come on the podcast in the grief season. Can't find one. There's one in America. That's about it. And I and I started researching death doulas, and I'm like, I this is really a process that I've been in actually without even realizing for the last two years when my mum had her stroke and she was in hospital, and then she had to move into a nursing home, and she was the youngest person in there, and I found it so hard to move through that and accept that and I did a lot of work with my spiritual coach in this space and my soul you know so so the listeners are you know uh, some of you might listen to this and think yeah I'm spot on some of you'll think she's crazy but I did a lot of soul work where my soul talked to my mum's soul yeah and I realized that I had an attachment to my mum and um I thought that was healthy but I realized that actually um, having a connection with her was much more healthier because when we're attached to anyone, the second they pull away or something happens, we feel like that we are, we, they, we belong to them or they belong to us and, you know, that kind of thing versus a connection. And I did a lot of soul work where I had to understand that her soul path was her soul path and her journey was her journey and it wasn't mine to try and fight, to resist. That didn't make it easier when she passed, but it gave me a real understanding of life after death and actual spirit and how I could communicate with her. And I really, I get signs a lot that she's around me. And I feel like, of course I miss her. I cry every day still. But sometimes it's for 10 minutes. Sometimes it's for 30 seconds. Like when I read that poem, that got me. Yeah. But I may not cry for the rest of the day about it, right? And so, but I allowed it and I I just fell into it. And I think when we start to go in and allow ourselves to do that work and be seen and be vulnerable and really feel grief in its entirety, we can move through it quicker. Not that we're moving on, but we go to the next phase. Moving through it, yeah, uh-huh. you move through it. And I think there there's... You know, we're only just coming out of that sort of uh, stiff upper lip generation, really. And um, there's so much pressure on people to hurry up and get on with it. You know, it's been a year. It's been a year. You know, mm-hmm. and that, that, you know, it's too much. There, there should be no expectation of how you're going to go on after grief and how that's going to affect you. It's going to affect everybody differently. And it's going to be completely, you know, um, dependent on the relationship and, and how how huge that person was in your life physically as well as you know emotionally and as well as 
um, how you relied on each other on a daily basis. That's that's just humanity. It's the way that it is. If you were best friends with your mum, or if it's your partner that passes away, you know, there is a much bigger wrench because it's it's everything. It's it's your day to day. It's your every moment it has to change. You know, it has to be completely reworked, and that's huge. Um, and you know, the process is is really intricate and really involved and and so different for everybody but I do still see people sort of feeling like oh you know it's been it's been a while now so mm -hmm. let's you know let's get you out and about and all that and that's fine if you're going to get them out and about and let them talk about it or let them cry when they want to cry or you know I think a lot of people at Christmas time will not join in because they're afraid they're going to cry and bring mm -hmm. the mood down why doesn't everybody cry you know what I mean that there are there are several you know um cultures and generations who would all just cry you know it's it's hard it's emotional you can laugh one minute mm -hmm. and cry the next yeah, and then totally. you can cry again it doesn't have to ruin the night you know no, it doesn't exactly happen. I think like, if you're you held see. in the space and you don't feel like you need to hold it in or yeah. it's been too long it actually passes quicker when we just allow yeah, instead of resisting get it out and I think the best way to get that out is to discuss it and to bring the person into the room and you know it's uh, avoiding seeing their name or you know it's it's not going to help it's going to make it worse actually and it might it might be tough for that 10 minutes and and somebody might not be ready for that and and you know that's up to you to decide how each individual will take it but I think at Christmas time especially there is a do we mention it do we not you know, um, in every household and, and some people are, are really intuitive with that and other people will really struggle and will keep, keep away um, because they don't want to show their grief or bring people down or, you know, and, and, and I think that's something that we need to work on as a country specifically as well, um, you know, and, and remind each other that you can, you can feel all the things in one minute. And I often do, <laughs> you know, and that is life. And that's what you're not meant to be composed. No, we're not. I know. Some people are. And I remember as a teenager thinking, oh, I wish I was one of these people that was really graceful and composed and never said the wrong thing or cried or blurted out or had a tantrum. And I'm not that at all. You know, I am raw emotion in a human form. And as I get older, you know, I'm, I'm certainly a lot different, but that's not because I'm trying. It's because I'm not holding it in anymore. Therefore, it flows a lot more, you know, yeah. easily. But um, composure is overrated, you know, and uh, stiff upper lip is rubbish. <laughs> it is. You know, we're human and we love and we love deeply and we, we let people inside our heart knowing the damage that is going to be done in there. And I think, you know, pets remind us of that in, in in shorter spaces of time because you know when you get a pet you already know your heart is broken because you are going to outlive yeah. that pet and that is you know that and but we do it and we it doesn't love them. stop us doing it you no know, and they love us and that's what we're here for you know that's what we're here for and I think once you get through the really difficult stages I think you can use that love that's left because it never goes away just because the person's gone the love is still as strong what do you do with it you know you must use that love mm -hmm. and you must help make more love like they did and you have to keep that power because it's it is the biggest power of them all you know you have to keep that power burning bright and it makes me sad when I see people who um who shrivel in um you know for good mm -hmm. and you know and don't realize that that love is theirs to radiate out and share um, it's it's a really sad thing and it's sadder than the loss itself you know yeah it's that they've never allowed themselves to fully live yeah. and love again because it's you know there's no end to it it should never end and you know you don't run out of it it's the one thing you can't run out of you can't I know and underneath all of the pain is love like when yeah. we go you know what's inside anger fear what's inside fear more anger what's inside anger upset what's inside that sadness what's inside that alone what's inside that and then when we go underneath it's love isn't it 
I'm going to read a wee poem to you if you don't mind. Oh, I'd love that. Uh, it's not one I've read before out or shared even on, on social media, but it's a tiny little one and it's called <clears throat> Inside Out. Get used to grief, my friend, for once it calls, it does not take its leave. An unwanted guest, but a guest nonetheless, and a guest we must receive. Get used to grief, my friend, for once it's with you, it sticks like sea to shore. The folks who grieve get no reprieve, just still learning to live once more. Get used to grief, my friend, for when it arrives, it won't be escorted out. So usher it in, let the grief win, it's love turned inside out. And I wanted in that poem to show that you're not getting rid of grief. You're not getting through the grief. You're not leaving the grief behind. You now have grief in your life. Let it in, give it a space at the table. You know, when you look at her, she's not the monster that you think she is. She's actually love. And I think that sort of mind shift on grief and having to get over it and, you know, battle grief and win can be really helpful because uh, once grief knocks at your door, you know, that's it. It's part mm -hmm. of your life now. But that needn't be a negative, dark and, and depressing thing. It's just the acceptance of the circle of life and, 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 and learning to move on with that as part of you. Oh, you got me again. Oh my God. <laughs> I got myself. <laughs> There's a couple in here that I can't even read. Oh, and, uh, I know. <laughs> I wrote a few end of life ones because uh, I get quite a few people who ask me, you know, I'm I'm dying, and I want to include some things in my, you know, end of life. And I mean, I can't even when people are faced with that, and you know, you've got children and you've got loved ones. Um, it is the hardest thing to put yourself in. But when uh, when Dame Deborah was was dying um I wrote a few you know in her honor about sort of getting yourself ready for end of life and what you want people to remember and what you want people to take and how you know how long you want people to to you know stay in each phase for and and I think that they, they're they're really helpful to write um because we avoid that feeling especially as a mum don't you if anybody goes puts that thought in your head that you might leave your kids well yeah it's unbearable it's instantly panic you know unbearable but once you actually go further into it you know it's love it's just beautiful all consuming you know mama bear you know uh, you know tale as old as time ancestors you know survival love um but there are a few in there that I, can, I can't read out oh I was going to just <laughs> I was just going to ask you to read one there finish me right off I wish we all Let me see. I'll, I'll pick one. I might oh not pick goodness. the one that I know that makes me cry, um, but I will pick one and read it. Um, I'm not going to read the ones that I always read because there are a few from here um, <clears throat> that have sort of gone viral, a couple of them, because they're used at funerals and things like that. And, you know, and I knew that they were going to be... Um, popular because they they can be sort of read into by anybody they're not specific uh, which is lovely but there, there are a few others in here that you know will never be that kind of a poem but that are my favorites but anyway I'll read this one to you just because it's told me to read it to you mm. and this one is called again we'll meet again of that I'm sure and though I should not rush I know that time is running out I wish the clocks to hush for there is more I need to do that you would hold so dear. And then I've lots to tell you when once again we're near. I'll tell you of the starlit nights and know you saw them too. Looking from a different place, but seeing the same view. I'll make you laugh with tales of joy, adventures through and through. I'll dip my toes in crystal seas and bring that back to you. We'll meet again, of course we will. Till then, sweet time must bend. I have so much to do until I see you once again. So beautiful. So <clears throat> oh, beautiful. Thank, you. thank you. Your words are such a gift. Oh, that's, thank you. <laughs> and I know like you're, there's so much being shared around what you're doing right now. And I do think this time of year, people are really 
this is when it really comes in this wintering season where yeah. we sort of kind of start to winter and we start to shed a lot of older emotions or, or, or things start to rise to the surface I know like this time of the year I always do this I always sort of take that time to really just winter yeah um but I see like there's so many like people that have been on this podcast that are sharing your your work as well and it's so special it oh, is so you. special you have such a gift what a gift it's very kind I don't see it like that at all oh trust I just, me yes, I just it think is. I'm writing it down and I think many of us could and I just think that I am and because I do it so much you know the volume that I do it in is is huge <laughs> I do it every day all day every day so um but I just see it as I don't know I just see it as an energy release more than a gift but it's it's wonderful when anybody says that obviously I'm very um flattered but I do think many of us speak like this of course we don't give ourselves the chance or the opportunity yeah, exactly. to we're, we're very busy yeah. in our minds and we're busy yeah. working on the all the other stuff but actually when we really tune into ourselves that yeah. wisdom and those words come yeah. from our higher self that's why right? it resonates because you already knew it I'm exactly. not telling you anything that you didn't know because if I was you wouldn't recognize it you wouldn't resonate but you already know that that's why you've gone oh because somewhere it needs to you come up it with deeply. It. yeah so, so those I emotions always, need to come up I always say that you know everybody's saying oh the writer the writer and I want to say the reader because you recognize yourself in it therefore you know the credit goes to you as well if you read that and felt that then it's no different from me writing it and feeling it it's just the same process you know going in a circle so you know I'm I, I'm amazed at how many amazing people there are um who are constantly sharing it and elaborating on it and adding their little energy to it and it's a huge snowball you know and that's what gives it the power if it was just me sitting writing in a room you know yeah. It, there would be no power so it's, it's a joy the feeling, <laughs> yeah it's the feeling isn't it and it's that energy as a collective yeah it's a joint effort it completely. it's completely. beautiful but you're definitely a channel for you know this <laughs> this is your mission and just Donna I really want to get you back on again because I think there's I so much back. that we can talk about and Anytime. um I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming on and just you know as this is a a time for me where I'm still navigating it it's still yeah. relatively early we're going to have our first Christmas without my mum this year and so early it's so, so early. early it's so you're, early you're doing brilliantly to be able to sit here and do this um mm. you know that's raw um you are a real inspiration and you're mm. going to be a real inspiration to many and you know people will look to you to uh to lead them if when they're facing their first Christmas as well, you know, you're actually living it right now. So well yeah. done. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And I, the work I do is in service. And so I love, you know, it lights me up, but I did take time out, sort of took, you know, the last four or five months off. And the first sort of thing I've done is my retreat that I ran with my friend. We ran a, we run retreats and we had that a few weeks ago. And this, that's the only things I'm doing. Yeah now um but it's this feels really in full alignment for me when I yeah. drop into the body it's a full body yes for this anything that's not I'm like it's an over well, now and I've said no to lots that's, of things that's how I live my life anyway yeah uh, once you start saying no to the things that just do not feel right you don't have to have an, a reason you don't have to have any you don't you just and, create more space for everything that yeah, is yeah and then the <laughs> the things that you do do you're doing you know you're you're doing for the right reasons and properly and what a difference that makes to your peace we all want inner peace and it's that's peace. it it's doing peace things that are thing. yeah. happiness is like sadness it comes and goes people say are you happy well right this minute you know I'm feeling a hundred things but for me happiness is not a state of being it's mm -hmm. it's an emotion that should come and go like mm -hmm. sadness like anger yeah. like joy peace can be a state of being and you can be peaceful in your sadness you can be peaceful in your happiness you can be peaceful in your anger 
you know, and so I've been chasing peace my entire life because I have a busy brain, you know, and an over stimulated, over anxious brain. So if, if it's, you know, it's taken my peace, it's costing my peace, it's too expensive. And that is the, the line that I live by. Oh, I love that. If it's costing my peace, it's too expensive. <laughs> Ooh, I think we could all take that, yeah. right? Yeah. And I agree wholeheartedly. I won't do anything that's not yeah. full body. Yes, I just won't do it. I mean, you, can go out, you can go out of your way in kindness because there is peace in that. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But, but you learn the difference between going out of your way in kindness and going out of your way and, you know, uh, these are not the right boundaries here. And mm. it, it's not going to do any of us any good, actually, because, it, you know, there's no flow. Um, but, yeah, it's 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 worth doing. It's worth chasing peace. I stopped chasing happiness a long time ago and set my sights on peace and it's been the best thing I've ever done I love it you're speaking to my soul here <laughs> I'm like oh all of that yeah exactly it's just it gets easier right non-attachment and it's totally. just totally. it's just it gets easier when we yeah. just trust you know and it all comes from that you know self-awareness self-acceptance and oh my gosh <clears throat> thank you thank you and your books we are you know, we'll drop the links to your books because I, I know for sure people are going to want those. I mean, look at them. I'll show you. <laughs> I know. I mean, I'm like, very good at holding three. Not three. many people release three books at once. Life, love, loss. Yeah, love it. <laughs> and I'm going to include these in the 20 days of Christmas because what a beautiful gift. So, um, and your words mean so much to me and they've really supported me these last few months. So I'm pulling together that package where I want to gift someone this, you know, this Christmas sort of hamper to allow them to really work and feel into their emotions and, and help themselves heal through this, this period. So your books are definitely part of that. Donna. Oh, so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> me it's been a joy and I could stay here all day so I'm going to have to let you go yes, now <laughs> absolutely thank you so much Donna and I'll see you on the next part two <laughs> yeah see you soon bye